Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My stress levels have been up to here because every time I sit down to film something goes wrong or I will film and afterwards I'll notice the audio is completely off because my microphone's been giving me jip. I don't even want to address the background issues because that's likely to fall down at any moment. So I'm just gonna continue as if I've never left, if that's okay. Like if you follow me on my social medias, like my Facebook, Instagram and Snapchat and Twitter to a degree as well, you'll know I'm still alive. I've just been kind of missing from YouTube because honestly, making videos is a lot more hassle than taking a quick clip and posting to Snapchat or posting a quick tweet or a Facebook status or an Instagram post. It's just, ugh, the laziness is taking over, but I'm determined to put out, keep putting out YouTube content because uh, because it's my roots. Today I am putting three products to the test, all from the same brand, and I'm actually really excited to give these a go. I have a little bit of fake tan on today, so hopefully the shade will match, I'm not really sure. I just swatched on my hand, which isn't the best idea, but we'll see. All these products are from Too Faced, so what I'm gonna put to the test is the Too Faced Born This Way foundation, which I got in the color Nude. The Born This Way Naturally Radiant Concealer in the color Very Fair. Packaging is so darling. And then the Too Faced Primed and Poreless Pressed Powder, which I've heard amazing things about. All these products are not only cruelty free, but also vegan. And I've heard really, really good things, so this should be interesting. I also have a brand new beauty blender straight from the packaging. Obviously I've dampened it and all the rest. So I will be using the foundation and the concealer with a brand new sponge. My plan is to put the foundation all over my face, obviously. I'm then going to use the concealer under both my eyes and as regards the powder, I'm going to just use this on one half of my face. It's completely colorless, so it shouldn't change the color of my skin, but it might change the texture and then we can compare side by side. This foundation is 30 mils, which is your very standard foundation amount and the packaging. Can you even? Also comes with a nice little pump. As you can see, I haven't used it yet. So here we go, I'm gonna give it a good shake. This claims to replenish skin's moisture levels, brighten skin's appearance, promote elasticity, which is always good, and it gives a smoother, more youthful appearance. Okay, so it's quite liquidy. Like it is running a little bit there. So we'll see how we go. I am going to apply, okay, so I have some texture issues down here at the moment. A Little bit of redness around my nose, some freckles obviously across my cheeks, but otherwise my skin is actually quite good at the moment. So let's see how we go. I'm going to zoom you in so you can see a little bit better. Now, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of this on my beauty blender and just pounce this. I'm gonna start on left hand side. Ooh, the shade match is good for my fake tan. Thank God. I wanted to get a shade that was kind of fair enough that I could just about get away with it if I brought it down on my neck and also that would match fake tan as well, so. Um, I'm not getting a scent. Maybe just like a fresh scent. Looks gorge, but out of product. Now it did say it was an oil-free foundation, therefore it is water-based. So Beauty Blender possibly not the best tool to use when applying. Do you know what I'm gonna do actually? I'm going to apply the right hand side with a brush. Feels really nice on the skin, feels light. I actually really like the shade. I think it's a nice shade for pale people who wear fake tan. And one layer of coverage seems to be pretty nice. I still see my freckles through it, which is nice. I didn't have to build it up any areas. Yes, you can still see texture down here, but to be honest, no foundation is gonna cover texture. So just to give you an idea of the coverage difference, you can just compare left to right. So I am going to need to pump more onto my little palette. I'm gonna just do a pump and a half, and then I'm going to use a flat top brush like this to see how the application compares. Okay, I feel like the coverage is ever so slightly less on the side that I applied with the brush. So I am going to build it slightly and I feel like it's a little more work. But then the brush is always a little bit more work than a beauty blender, to be honest. Yeah, and the brush definitely uses a lot less product. As you can see, I have some left over there. 
But I think I would still use the Beauty Blender with this foundation because the finish was is a little bit more flawless. It was a little bit easier and it requires less effort. Okay, so far I'm definitely impressed with this foundation. It does feel slightly tacky, but we will see how that dries down after a little while. Next, on to the concealer, and this is the Born This Way Oil Free Naturally Radiant Concealer. And this is the color Very Fair. Now, it does look very, very fair, but we will see how it goes. I do like a really bright under eye. Doe foot applicator. And, okay, the color seems okay. So now I'm going to use the pointy end of the beauty blender just to blend that out and then we can compare under eyes then afterwards. Wow, that's blending super easily. I feel like I've been brightened up a lot in that under eye area. What do you think? I'm gonna apply it to the other side now. and I'll be right back. So the foundation still feels ever so slightly tacky, but it doesn't feel like I have much product on my skin. So now I'm going to use the powder. Wait till you see the packaging of this. It's like a bloody poly pocket. So this is the Primed and Poreless Skin Smoothing Pressed Powder. So I'm going to use the e.l.f. Flat Top. It comes with a little puff, which is super cute, but I will never use that. I'm just going to dab it in, get a small amount of product and just press it into my skin. Okay. I'm hoping you can see, it has definitely changed the texture of my skin on this side. The foundation feels 100% set now, whereas, like, I'm gonna zoom you way in. You can see the pores here. I'm hoping you can see them. Well, I'm hoping you can't, but they're there. On this side, the pores have been definitely, definitely minimized by the powder. I never realized I had such bad pores before. Yeah, you can tell this side is definitely more matte. I wouldn't say it's fully matte, I'd say it's like a satin finish. And then this side is much more dewy. That's interesting. I can't actually believe it um, filled in my pores so well. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is I am going to finish my makeup and then during the day I'm gonna check back in with you to see how this side compares to this side and then how the foundation and concealer is doing, especially under my eyes and my little fine lines. It doesn't look like it's settling too badly just yet, but again, I will have to come back and update you during the day. So, the bronzer, blush and highlight applied really nicely on both sides of my skin. However, it did apply slightly more pigmented on the non-powdered side, which would make sense because obviously you're putting it on to still a slightly damp face, so it's going to grab onto the colour more, whereas I had to build it slightly more on the powdered side. Other than that, everything else applied perfectly. I feel like this, like the foundation is never gonna set on its own. But I mean, some people like that unset finish to their foundation. So that's why I'm doing it both ways to cover both bases. It is currently 11.39. I will come back in a few hours to update you on how both sides of my face are doing. Hello, it is now exactly five hours later. It's a quarter to five see that. Well it is. It's a quarter to five. Why do I lie? I never take daytime naps, okay? And in every single one of my first impression foundation videos, I'm pretty sure I take a nap, but I never do otherwise. So it's kind of crazy. It's like it takes it right out of me or something. I haven't given it a proper look yet, so let's, uh, let's do that, shall we? Oh, you can definitely, definitely see shine around the nostrils. It's, I would say like a three out of five on this side and probably like a four and a half out of five on this side. And also all along here, you can see it's just like a little bit greasier than this side. So if I were to wear this foundation again, pending something changes, I definitely would be powdering it because even on the powdered side, it still looks natural. It doesn't look cakey, it doesn't look anything like that. In fact, I probably could do with a little bit of a touch up in and around here. So I'm just gonna take a little bit more of the powder. So we've got this side of my face, which is now like a lovely satin matte, and this side, which is kind of very oily. So at least at the end of the day, we'll be able to see what would what my face would be like if I hadn't powdered it at all, and then with a touch up. So yeah. As for the concealer, I think it still looks quite good. What do you think? I mean, I do have some tiny fine lines around my eyes, but like, like I, I don't expect a concealer to fill those in or anything. But it's not accentuating any lines I have out here whatsoever. I'll see you in a while. It is 21.36, so it's like four minutes off the 10 hours. 
I am very shiny around here as you yeah you can see and also the shine has come back around here so I would say this is more of a setting powder that changes the finish of a foundation rather than an oil control slash blotting powder. This side is fine so I think in future I will definitely be using the powder when I'm using that foundation. Concealer wise I don't look like I'm 15 years old under my eyes but I don't look horrendous either. The concealer is held up as good as my favourite concealers, definitely, for sure. I will say the coverage seems to have diminished just a little bit right here, but that could be just because I'm tired. I have concealers that have better coverage for covering the dark circles, but for texture, this is, this is pretty, pretty, pretty good. The foundation itself, like, as I wore it during the day, it was very comfortable, and I didn't feel like I was wearing a ton of makeup. I also took a nap in the middle of the day and had my face mash into a pillow or a cushion. And there's been like minimal transfer. I will say the coverage is also fading a little bit in my chin area. You can see my breakouts. But I mean, hello, it's been 10 hours. Foundation definitely gets a thumbs up from me. A good coverage, good lasting power, nice and buildable. And for a high-end foundation, it's quite affordable. Concealer, good coverage. Not excellent coverage, good coverage. And sits nicely under the eye area. So yeah, I liked it. And the powder definitely lives up to the poreless claims. Isn't the best for oil control, but does leave a beautiful finish on the skin. Doesn't look cakey. But yeah, I do definitely like the powder too. So I would say all in all, a pretty successful triple first impressions. Let me know if you've tried any of these products in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what your thoughts on them are. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye.